Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the April Council meeting at Wodonga City Council. Uh, I'd like to start with acknowledgement of country. Wodonga Council acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the first inhabitants of the country and as traditional custodians of the land. We respect their ancestors, elders, young people, and recognise their continuous connections to lands, waters, and communities across the country. Item number two, apologies, request for leave of absence and request to attend by electronic. There's no request for electronic. Uh, is there any other apologies or requests for other leave? No, thank you. Um, number three, declaration by councillors of a conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts? No, thank you. Um, confirmation of minutes from the previous council meeting. Do I have a motion, please? Councillor Chamberlain, Councillor Simpendorfer, any discussion? I'll put that motion. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Uh, the next item is question time. We have, I believe, three questions. Mr. CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, question one um, has come from Brett, and he's asked uh, three questions in regards to council being the recipient of funding through the Free From Violence Local Government Program. First question is, how much funding has been allocated to this project through grant funding, council's financial contribution, and in-kind contribution. Second question is what the council intends to deliver with the Free for Violence program. And the third question is what other initiatives and actions is the council taking in its role as key partner in the prevention of violence, including violence against women, children in Wodonga? Uh, council's response is council was offered participation in the Free for Violence local government program, which emphasizes organization prevention initiatives within local government. While this funding was recognised as a valuable opportunity to build on the work done to date through our mandated public health plan, the council reg regrettably had to decline the funding due to resourcing constraints. Nevertheless, we remain open to collaborating with the state government on future opportunities. In the interim, council is committed to various initiatives aimed at advocating and promoting the prevention of all forms of violence, including but not limited to the Gender Equity Action Plan undertaking gender impact assessments and planning for the 16 days of a activism. I'll hand over to um, Dean of Leckett um, to answer the other two questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. CEO, through you, Mr. Mayor. Al Taylor has asked two questions. In summary, the two questions are, firstly, can council please provide rationale for their decision to not fund community and youth events across the council area? And secondly, can the council please advise their rationale for deciding to not fund the Northeast Skate Park series comp competitions at Wodonga and Baranduna Skate Park? The response is, council is in receipt of freezer funding from the state government as its primary source of support for youth events valued at 35,500 per annum. This funding supported council to deliver the Northeast Skate Park series in 2023 without further ongoing commitment. In addition, Council has provided Drop-In Takeoff, a local NFP incorporated body, with sponsorship for skate events in June 2022 and January 2024. Council continues to program youth events, including social connection and civic participation events. These events are developed in conjunction with the Freezer crew and change year to year according to broader youth programming priorities. Some neighbouring councils are also in receipt of the state government's engage funding 2022 to 2024 and are using these to help deliver the skate series. Whilst Wodonga Council is not in receipt of the engage funds, Youth Albury Wodonga is and uses these funds to invest in young people across our city. Additionally, council has secured Vic Health funding and are working with young people to roll out a range of events and workshops focused on young people in alignment with council's municipal health and wellbeing plan. Thank you, officers. Uh, item number six on the agenda is petitions, of which there are none. 
Item number seven is delegates' reports, of which there are none. And that leads us into item eight, reports for determination. The first item for determination, 8.1, is road discontinuance and sale of land at 7B McFarland Road, Wodonga. Do I have a motion, please? Councillor Hall, as recommended. Seconder, please. Councillor Lowe. Uh, Councillor Hall. Uh, yes, the decision around this came up at the October meeting last year. Um, it has been out uh, for community feedback and no submissions were received. The report recommendation is to now proceed with the sale of land to which I will be supporting tonight. Thank you. Councillor Lowe. Yeah, thank you. I'll be supporting the re same, uh, recommendation as well, um, echoing my fellow councillor's words that there was no submissions. It's a it's a win win win. This one, so it was an unused piece of land sitting there doing nothing, um, and we've got a developer that's decided to um, develop the site there, which requires extra parking for their site, which will activate the area for a building that's been sitting unused for a lot of years. And also there's a couple of business, oh well, a couple of community centres around it, community groups around it, around it that will also benefit from the off-street parking at night when they've got overflow for theirs. So, um, and that's um, now taken away the maintenance need for the area for council as well. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be supporting. Thank you. Other councillors? Councillor Hall to close. Uh, no, I have no further comments to add. Thank you, Councillor. I put that motion. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Councillors, the next item on the agenda is 8.2 Valley Views Estate Proposed Declaration of a Special Rate Charge Scheme. Um, just by way of explanation, under the Local Government Act provisions, this is when, when you put a, a special rate charge scheme in place, there's a few um, somewhat unusual provisions that apply. One of those unusual provisions is that uh, people who make submissions and request to be heard um, on those submissions uh, have a right to be heard and there's two ways that that can happen. The one way is by a committee that's established um, through the normal course of council activities or at the normal council meeting. Um, in the case of this activity, the uh, people who've, who've requested to be heard are to be heard by the full council. We don't actually have a committee that, that um, would ordinarily deal with those things. So um, I guess what I'm saying is this is a very uh, unique situation. It's not something that broadly applies and generally there is no ability for uh, the public to address council meetings um, without leave of the chair. This is a different situation. So we have um, a matter before us which, by way of explanation, when we do a uh, special charge scheme, there's a whole bunch of rules that wrap around it. And one of those rules is that council can't approve it if, if a majority of people oppose it. Uh, in the case that's before us, we have a majority of um, the respondents or the people that would be affected by it have opposed it. So in essence, the council doesn't have an option but to not proceed with the rate scheme as it's been proposed. So having said all that, I'd now invite the, the um, two submitters who wish to be... Uh, to wish to speak... Um, I invite them, we've had up to five minutes to speak to the, to the submission and you must speak only to the submission. You cannot introduce uh, items or matters that weren't included in your submission. You can elaborate on what is included but it must stay to the submission as it's presented. Um, other than asking, other than um, procedural matters through uh, 
uh, myself and the chair, there will be no opportunity to ask questions of the council. Um, there will be no questions directed at the participants speaking. Councillors may question through the chair once they have finished speaking in order to clarify or explore matters only and cannot introduce new matters into the conversation. There is no scope for any debate um, between the submitters and or councillors. Um, now, under Rule 77.3 of the Meeting Procedures Rules, um, all people must extend due courtesy and respect to council and to the submitters and the processes under which it operates and must take direction from the chair whenever called to do so. So, having set the rules around all that, I'd like to call the first speaker um, and we'll invite uh, Wendy and Andrew McCaddy to speak first, please. Okay, so um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to address you directly. Um, as the Mayor has uh, advised, this is a quite unusual. Um, and it's in regards to the special rates scheme and the future of the Valley Views estate. Um, we are keen to have the councillors understand the Valley Views residents are not a corporation, we are not an identity, and we are not a business with a focus on profit or attempting to apply rules and regulations to this particular situation, although legal, um, is morally flawed. We are 43 families with different life goals and aspirations and the spaces at Valley Views are in fact family homes. It is therefore considered unreasonable by the majority of the residents to this group, uh, to group us all together under the special rates scheme proposal. In particular, the tripling of rates at a time of unprecedented cost of living. It is also considered unreasonable for those that did not um, do not want to subdivide their homes um, now or in the future. Some residents have taken it into, considera in taking into consideration the immediate um, development costs and those into the future where all residents would be liable regardless of their circumstances. This challenges the, the council's premise that all residents would, would derive a benefit or advantage from the creation of the development plan and the subsequent subdivisions. It should be noted that this is not just about the financial costs, but also the cost of loss of lifestyle. It has been, an, it's been our experience that the Valley View Estate is a community of neighbours supporting each other, uh, and the expectation is that Wodonga Council would encourage this community bonding and self-resilience. However, the special rates scheme proposal has been extremely um, uh, diverse. We understand that the special rates scheme proposal has been defeated, as um, was discussed earlier, um, awaiting your um, decision and outcome. However, we have continuing concerns about the future of Valley Views Estate. Um, I understand that you said that you're not supposed to ask questions, but again, I was not aware of this um, prior to my drafting my um, response. However, um, can, councils, can council confirm that Wodonga Council will not fund the now or into the future, a development plan for the Valley Views Estate. That is one of our concerns. The other concerns and questions that we have that some of the residents decide, if the, some of the residents decide to push forward with a privately funded developed plan, how is this going to impact on the residents of the estate? There has been a distinct lack of detail, either by neglect or by design, regarding the second or third order effects that would, would be a product of the development plan. The following ongoing concerns still exist and we believe that the, that the generation of a development plan and subsequent subdivision may severely disadvantage the majority of the residents of the estate. The plan must recognise the diversity, the, um, the plan must recognise the density increase will change traffic volumes and identify road standards, upgrade requirements which includes roads to be widened, upgraded, drainage, curbage and channel installed. Who is financially liable? for these uh, changes. The plan is to, ident is to identify the street network conditions necessary to accommodate the additional lots. Does this mean potentially punching roads through properties that do not wish to be subdivided? Is this a case of compulsory acquisition of land? 
The DP018 requires land for public processes such as playgrounds, public open spaces, stormwater, recreational, which will need to be accommodated at current, uh, on the current private land as advised by the council. The plan must also identify land required for public purposes such as electrical substations, pump stations and community facilities. Again, is this compulsory acquisition of land to achieve this? The plan developed information sheets, uh, information sheet also advises that infrastructure upgrades are required to support the higher lot density, will require reticulated sewerage to be installed. We have made the assumption that all the residents in the estate would be forced to remove their septic tanks and connect to the, reg uh, the reticulated sewerage at the individual's expense. This would not only have an, a uh, financial impact but also affect the mature trees and gardens that have been established over the last 20 years. The Supply Development Plan Information Sheet advises that the plan must include a detailed physical and social infrastructure and reticulated service cost distribution plan encompassing all lots contained within the Valley Views Estate. What does this mean to the residents, especially those that do not want to subdivide at any stage? The development plan information sheet also states that the entity responsible for preparing the development plan may be able to share the costs with the, and recoup the costs from other landowners. What does this look like and is, this, is it enforceable? The majority of residents and Valley Views would like to see some clear guidance from the council advising them of the real costs associated with the development of Valley Views, both in, uh, immediately and in the long term to all residents, not just those who wish to subdivide, including the inevitable uh, increase in rates. Am I still good to go or? No? Okay, I'll have more. Thank you. Um, if there's other things that you wanted to say, you're quite welcome to drop a note into the council and, and elaborate on things, um, bearing in mind that the decision on the rates scheme will be made tonight. Uh, thank you. Um, the next speaker is... Um, Mr Rod Dudley. Please. <laughs> right here. Uh, thank you. Um, um, oh, good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, never been to a council meeting before, so but um, the reason I objected to the um, to the uh, plan develop or the plan costings and the um, development is I felt that the, from my understanding, there was three quotes received by the council. Uh, they picked the dearest one, which I understand the logic behind that, but when we were told that the costings were, the costings which were detailed in the, in the letter were all based on the dearest one instead of a, depending on it could be, I would have preferred it stated on there that it could be this cost depending on which one the council accepts. Now, if the residents are going to have to pay for an overlay plan, um, I really feel if we're pay if it's coming out of our pocket, then I really felt that the residents should have uh, an entitlement to actually say if there was a overlay plan two hundred thousand dollars cheaper than the dearest one, then I don't see why. If it complied with all um, all regulations with regards to an overlay plan, I don't see the reason why the dearest one should be chosen and then saying, you've got to pay that. But there was no proviso put in that to say it could be this, but if it is cheaper, it'll only be this. So I actually felt that we were, um, given that the money's coming out of our pocket, that we weren't given a say in which plan we would prefer to go with and um, so that's the reason that basically that's the reason I objected to it that the um, when money's coming out of your pocket you at least uh, want a bit of a say in it and we weren't given any say as to what the uh, what that was so 
basically that was the reason for my objection and thanks very much for hearing me. Thank you. Okay, councillors, we have a report in front of us. Do I have a motion, please? Councillor Poulton, can you read it out? Yep. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, this one's slightly different to what was originally recommended by officers in our published agenda for item 8.2. So uh, I do move that one. The council note the verbal submissions from Rod Dudley and Wendy and Andrew McCady, who requested to be heard in support of their written submissions. Two, having followed the processes and procedures as set out in section 163, 163A and 223 of the Local Government Act 1989, and having received objections from the majority of the property owners within the Valley Views Estate, the council resolves that it cannot make a declaration to implement a special charge scheme over the estate to defray the costs associated with the preparation and submission of a development plan as required under development plan overlay, Schedule 18 of the Wodonga Planning Scheme. Three, the Chief Executive Officer formally communicates the outcome of this process and the resolution of the Council, including the reasons for it, to the Section 223 submitters and other property owners of the Valley Views Estate. And four, the Council will only consider this matter once a development plan has been prepared by the property owners of Valley Views Estate which meets the requirements of the Wodonga Planning Scheme, specifically development overlay schedule 18, and is submitted to the council for consideration and approval. Uh, that's where I'll move. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Poulton. Um, there may be an issue with point number four. Um, we might need to think about what the impacts would be if somebody actually lodged an application for development of some description that was exempted or even if it wasn't exempted, lodged an application for planning approval under the Planning and Environment Act, we don't have the, I'll call it the luxury of being able to say, sorry, we're not gonna consider it. We must consider it. So with the wording the way it is now, I believe we're probably ultra virus beyond the powers of council to say we won't consider anything. Um, is there some suggestion with modifying the words? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I will point out that our officers that are delegated to control a lot of these matters and their professional expertise on a matter such, of which I gave a week's notice to have words prepared uh, substantially and circulated to my colleagues to consider, um, I'll, I'll defer for their advice perhaps on if there's any unintended consequences or concerns from that provided to councillors. Thank you. Um, do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Sindendorfer. Um, Councillor Poulton, speak to the motion. Can I just double check that officers are comfortable with what's written there in terms of that's a question before I talk, thank you. Mr CEO. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, we're comfortable with that wording. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. CEO. And I just want to, um, I guess, apologise to the residents of Valley Views Estate um, for what has been a very long and stressful process, not just this time around, um, but over many, many years. Um, having met with both, uh, I, I don't want to call them segments of the community there in Valley View, but having met with members of both, those that do want to develop, those that certainly make it clear they don't and seem to be now in the majority, um, and perhaps always have been. Uh, the one thing that is on record from me back when we started this process was the fact that I wasn't going to support that because I knew of the division that it already created within the sector of our community. Um, and as articulated this evening quite well is around the financial impact uh, imposed upon those in the community that haven't asked for that and don't request or ever wish for that, maybe not now, maybe not in the future at all, um, is making sure we do something as a council that makes it clear. Um, so anybody that does own property there <coughs> realises the hurdles that have to be met before they could ever come back to this conversation again. Because one thing um, is to divide a community um, over what somebody's preference is over somebody else's and for us not to be clear. The other thing is to spend considerable council resources that we have, as we have now for years and years um, in a time when you'll hear and follow and, and, and uh, spectate the fact that this council's, you know, got uh, 
got some financial hurdles and, and the headwinds, as councillors have said, over many months now. Um, every single hour that we have an officer in this building representing an entire growing population, we need to be focused pretty uh, adequately and evenly across the entire population, not just keep coming back to one he said, she said uh, essence within a section of the community. Um, I can be hated for that. That's okay to have that view, but, but I think... Uh, whilst the officers had a good recommendation before us uh, when this uh, agenda was published, I was concerned it didn't draw a solid enough line in the sand to say, hey, this is what we need from you as a collective group of property owners before we can reasonably come back. Um, what I'm hoping, if this motion is carried, it prevents us from doing is potentially in another six months starting this process again and going, oh, we've got two new residents in the street, let's see if we can get it across the line this time. Um, if, if there hasn't been substantial change there, we can't keep uh, spending time and resources of this council, um, which is financially um, challenged, to keep coming back to same topics. And I believe this has actually been dealt with uh, adequately in the past. However, we've got some perhaps short memories or perhaps um, just opportunities in change of elected representatives and things like that over the years tend to encourage these conversations to keep coming back. Um, so whilst uh, I would like to be a little firmer um, than what I have in front of me. The fact that the officers have come back with a reasonable um, solution for me to move this evening, um, I'm happy to support that and, uh, and obviously test the floor. But, but uh, I'd hope that my colleagues who uh, some understand planning much better than I do would be able to articulate things like houses are already built in the middle of the blocks out there. How do we overcome that when someone decides they want to split it up? How do we do um, all the different things that we think we should give them the option to do, when realistically some of us in this room know we'd never be able to achieve it, why keep entertaining that idea into the future for people? Just make a clear decision tonight, councillors, is my thoughts for you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paul, Councillor Simpson Milford. Reserve, any other councillors? Councillor Hall. Uh, yes, look, this has been ongoing. I've been on term two, this is my second council term and it has been uh, an issue and, and like um, Councillor Poulton has said, it's uh, spent a lot of uh, our, our um, officers' time in dealing with this. So I think the, the uh, consultation or the exhibition um, uh, time that, and, and energy that the council put forward was uh, substantial. Um, at the end of all of that, uh, there were 27 objections uh, received, um, representing a, an objection rate of 63%. Um, it appears that most of the re uh, residents in the estate opposed the special charge scheme to be defrayed across the whole uh, estate. And that's the only way it can be done unless there are the individuals who want to pay that cost and and do it as a um, private separate um, separate scheme or separate issue that, that they will fund. Um, I don't, look, it, we can't have it keep coming back, although, you know, um, I suppose uh, if someone comes up with the development um, plan, uh, we will look at it. But I sort of, in, in my view, I support Councillor Poulton's um, Motion, I think it uh, is fa fairly uh, fair, and um, and I think at really at this stage, after all the work that we've put into it, and in looking at um, how we can address this in the most um, fair and uh, reasonable way with all the residents, I think uh, this is the only way we we can go. So yes, I'll, I think I'll be supporting it. Thank you, Councillor Hall. I draw Council's attention to the fact that this uh, matter is in regard to a special rate scheme. It's not in regard to the planning issues that might be associated with the development plan that that special rate scheme is to fund. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Chamberlain. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm only a relatively new councillor here, but we took the option to try and give the people of Valley Views a way forward. It was up to them to make a decision as to whether or not they wanted to take that up. They've clearly voted to not take it up, and I think we need to respect that. I'm a bit wary about item four as per the amended thing, um, but having said that, if we make a declaration to say that we won't uh, reconsider the matter unless those things are met, 
that will either stand or fall on someone putting in an application and saying, well, we think you should. So I suppose we'll see how that washes out. Um, although I'm more than happy with the recommendation of the appropriate officers, there's always a solicitor out there somewhere that'll tell you what you think you need to hear. So we'll see how that works out. But having said that, um, again, it was a fairly simple process. The people got to make their submissions. The submissions overwhelmingly were not to go ahead with this scheme. So I don't think we've got any option but to deny it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chamberlain. Other councillors? OK. Um, I have to speak last, which is before you getting to this point. So um, there's a couple of things. Um, I'll start with the obvious bit first. The point four, which says the council will only reconsider this matter vis-a-vis -vis the matter of a special rate scheme once a development plan has been prepared is um, moot effectively because why would we need to reconsider a special rate scheme if the development plan has been done? There's total inconsistency in my opinion. Um, so that, that's the first bit. I think I understand the, the intent is to try and um, stop council having to spend time over time over time, but we are committed under legislative provisions under the Planning and Environment Act to consider any and every application that's made. Now, considering it might be a refusal if it doesn't meet the requirements, if there's no development plan and so on, but we still must consider it. So we cannot say that we will not consider it. And I don't think that's what this is trying to say, but there's some inconsistencies in that, in point number four, in my opinion. Um, the next bit, what this whole issue is about is an issue of contract of sale provisions versus planning scheme provisions and versus the intent of different landowners to, to have different intent for the long-term future of their land. And that issue is going to hang around and keep coming back and coming back until we solve the problem. So at some point, we're going to have to bite the bullet and solve the problem. How we do that, that's still out there in the ether and I don't have a solution that's going to meet everybody's requirements. So this was, a, was an attempt to try and get a solution in place that meets the current planning scheme provisions and meets the current contract of sale provisions. So obviously we're not going to be going down this path because the rules say if a majority of people say you can't do it, well then you can't do it. Um, but I'm very concerned about point number four for the two reasons. One, I believe it's beyond the power to do the secondary intent part and um, initially it's not, doesn't make sense that we um, don't consider the matter when the matter doesn't have to be considered because if the development plan's done, then there's no requirement for the special rate scheme. I'd be happy to hear some adjustments to the words if that made it different, but as it is at the moment, I won't be supporting the motion. Uh, Councillor Simpendorf, you're reserved. Thank you. Um, I just want to acknowledge those that came in and spoke. Again, thank you for your time, and, and I certainly appreciate that you weren't aware you only had five minutes, and you probably spent many hours and a lot of stress in preparing your submission. So I just want to acknowledge the work that went into both submissions and coming in in person. So thank you for that. Um, I'll be supporting the matter. I'll, I appreciate what you're saying, Mr Mayor, on point four. Um, I think it's on record around the intent and the spirit of what we're trying to achieve here. And, and lawyers can be lawyers and don't disagree. I have a share, fair share of stouches with them. But um, I think the intent and spirit of this resolution is is to, to prevent this coming back again. And, and as uh, I think Councillor Port was said around, if someone wants to do that, then tick the boxes and perhaps come back. But here's our line in the sand that this special rate will not be um, considered due to that 63 odd percent of the community that has quite clearly stated that they're not in favour. So I'll be su supporting the motion as it is. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simsdorf, Councillor Portman to close. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I do appreciate your uh, dissatisfaction with the wording. Um, I would have encouraged you to perhaps come up with something a bit before now that maybe met your satisfaction so we could have a unanimous decision before Council, but that's okay. Um, we're not going to get that tonight. What I will say, though, uh, is <laughs> this Council's spent a lot of time, effort and money and there's been a lot of community heartache 
over uh, four letters, STCA, subject to council approval. Uh, and the other one, I think, is, uh, is purchases of properties from who they purchased them off, the old uh, buyer beware phrase of every single sales contract. Um, I think ultimately those two situations have led us to continue to keep coming back to this exact same conversation of a divided community because of the sales pitch and the sales process not of council. Yet we keep coming back and dealing with it. The ratepayers of Wodonga, who also all want little bits and pieces solved and fixed for them, keep having that time absorbed by this matter. Thankfully, uh, the numbers are there in that community that have said what they've said to allow us to move forward. What I am going to say that I'm hesitant, even with the wording as it is that I'll support, is that similar decisions have been made by this council in the past with different people sitting around this table, yet here we are again with something back before us and the community's still not too sure which way to go. Again, not from this council's problem. Uh, thank you. Put the uh, motion, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Paul. I put the motion. All those in favour? Uh, Councillor Lowe, Councillor Port and Councillor Hall, Councillor Chamberlain, Councillor Simpanor, for those against? Councillor Quilty, Councillor Mildred. The motion is carried. Uh, the next item before us is item 8.3, uh, road name for Barrandooda Field, uh, consultation feedback. Do I have a motion, please? Councillor Chamberlain. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Hall. Councillor Chamberlain. Uh, yeah, fairly straightforward here. We already uh, addressed this previously. We had to change the name that was originally uh, put up. Uh, and at the February Council meeting, we looked to go out for consultation on that change because there was a clash with a street in Albury. So Triumph Crescent has gone out. There were a, a number of submissions, but generally speaking, I think the recommendation's fair enough in that much the Triumph Crescent be adopted as the road name for the second road in Barrandoota Sporting Precinct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chamberlain. Councillor Hall. Uh, yeah, just uh, again, I'll give a bit of back history to it. Uh, back at the Council meeting in February this year, Council decided to go out to the community with a change made to the existing proposal for the naming of one of the two roads for Barrandoota Field Sporting Precinct. The original proposed name was noted to be too similar to a street name in Albury. Under guidelines provided by the Register of Geographic Names, a similar name should be avoided because of the confusion it creates with our central services. Council received seven submissions and there were three social media uh, posts during the consultation period. Five submissions showed support for the name Triumph Crescent, which was the, can which was the council staff recommendation and agreed to by council at a prior council meeting to be re recommended to go out for public feedback. Uh, five submissions offered alternate names, which included the acknowledgement of a local sports person, women in sports and First Nations people. I thought all the uh, submissions had merit, so thank you to those individuals for taking the time out to submit them to the council for evaluation. I know from being the chairperson uh, of the uh, Council Places Name Committee that there were some in-depth um, discussions around naming the roads and there was an overwhelming consensus that the name should be fairly neutral somewhat, uh, not uh, promoting one sport or individual over another. And the reasoning behind this is that some stage later, if decided by various groups, organisations that may eventually manage the grounds and or stadiums that they could look at individually naming this infrastructure in the, in the future. So uh, they, if they choose to do so. Um, it was a consensus, uh, it was a consensus of all of them, all of the committee that the naming of the roads in the Barrandoota Sporting uh, Precinct should be in some way representative of all sports, i.e. Triumph Crescent would uh, fit into that category. So uh, I will be supporting as I have done, uh, Triumph Crescent, as uh, 
I think it, in my view, it represents all the supporting groups and people. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hall. Other councillors? Uh, Councillor Simpendorf. Thank you. Um, thanks for, for that, Councillor Hall. I wasn't quite aware of the reason why it was changing, other than what was written in the text here. But um, I know, again, here's another example of more time of our committee on something that champion Crescent in Glenroy versus Champions Drive, sorry, Champions Drive in Glenroy versus Champion Crescent in Barranduda shouldn't have caused such a, an issue. I would have thought by geographic names, Victoria, and I'm sure that was discussed, but if our emergency services don't know the difference between Glenroy and Barranduda, we're in real trouble. Um, I'll be supporting it. I think it fits with everything that they say, but again, it's just a, probably another example of some time of our officers and our committees that have been taken up on these administrative things that probably can not be so focused, I guess, but yet here we are. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simpendorfer. Other councillors? You can move a procedure with me, put the motion. So I have a procedural motion to put the motion. So <laughs> I put the procedural motion. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. I put the motion. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Item 8.4, acceptance of the tender for management and operation of the aquatics and leisure facilities. Uh, correction from the last meeting. Do I have a motion, please? Councillor Chamberlain? Has Second. Seconder, please. Councillor Poulton? Councillor Chamberlain? Uh, simple clerical error, I suppose, when it comes to this. Um, $59,000 sounds like a lot of money to me but in the scope of $4,889,000, not so much. So um, it was simply an oversight and it needed to be corrected. So all we're going to do here is remove the previous, rescind the previous motion and then put a new one in with the correct number on. Thank you. Councillor Poulton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, what Councillor Chamberlain said was very, very well put uh, and I'll be supporting it. Um, $59,000 is quite an easy uh, error to make when you're playing with millions of dollars. I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Poulton. Other councillors? Councillor Poulton. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you to uh, whoever picked up that error. 59000 may be a small percentage of the whole contract. However, it is uh, several community grants or uh, some other useful money that... Uh, uh, could uh, uh, add up to 59,000, so uh, good pickup. Um, last time we voted on the uh, granting of this uh, tender to Aligned Leisure, I voted against it for the reasons stated at the previous meeting. I believe that uh, our aquatic facility uh, could be uh, managed a little bit better. We had a bit of a downturn due to COVID, and uh, we have been hoping for... Um, a bigger improvement as the time has passed. Uh, so uh, the uh, tender was granted uh, by the majority of vote. I do hope to see continuous improvement. There is no point for me to vote against uh, it because we are now talking about the correction of clerical error. So I will just simply support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coulty. Other councillors? Councillor Lowe? I'd just like to pick up and highlight that the, the error was picked up, but it, it, it's confirmed that the increase in the contract sum does not impact on the original assessment. So the, the assessors um, went back to it and the two, of the two tenders and it does not change the fact that a line leisure would still be their recommendation. So I think it's an important um, line to highlight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Other councillors? Uh, Councillor Chamberlain, close. Yeah, I'll simply uh, echo Councillor Lowe's statements there. Um, this council is run and operated by humans and humans make mistakes. Uh, it's always best to fix them as quickly as you can. This is, although as I said before, 59,000 is not insignificant on a personal state, but in... Um, Regards to this contract, it's not 
overly significant, and I think it's important that we get the numbers right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chamberlain. I'll put that motion. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. The next item on the agenda is item 8.5, Economic Development Strategy. Do I have a motion, please? Councillor Chamberlain. My motion is basically as per recommended, with possibly the removal of the word new structure of the Council's Economic Development Unit. Um, I think structure of the Economic Development Unit is enough. We have to use the Economic Development Unit to be able to deliver this. And, you know, I can just remove the, the word new. It's simply the economic development unit. That's what it is. Mm. So that's it. Same submission except for removal of the word new. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Quilty, Councillor Chamberlain. Again, given the fact that I've just removed a word from it, um, this goes for four years. That economic development unit will, won't be new by the second year. Uh, in fact, it won't be new within six months. So it has to be delivered by the, the economic development unit. That's going to require a few changes. There have been a few submissions and there will be more once we restructure it accordingly. Um, so this puts it out for public exhibition once we've restructured what that strategy is and uh, it's a fairly pointless thing to try and put out a strategy that we may not be able to deliver or more to the point we can't deliver. So it's important that that fits within the structure of how council operates. So it's appropriate, I think, to amend it, uh, revise it and review it, make sure it's right, make sure we can do it, put it on a public exhibition because after we've put it on public exhibition, we can't be going changing it because we've changed our mind. We need the public to tell us what they want. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chamberlain. Councillor Quilty, reserve. Other councillors? Other councillors? Going, going. Councillor Lowe. I understand this is being brought back to us because we've had um, um, what we seem to be a reduced capacity and what will turn out to be a reduced capacity to <coughs> implement some of the um, things we've highlighted in our economic development strategy. And I note there's areas in there that say about collaboration and, and stuff. And but when we want to collaborate with someone, I'd, I'd like to draw down on what does that mean? Does it just mean partnering with? Um, because I had a quick run over this and I thought if, if we're going to have a reduction in capacity of our eco dev department, we should be collaborating not only in a um, in IT's uh, intellectual property um, version, but also funding some collaboration. So we've got a reduced um, uh, capacity in-house to do things. We should be looking out of house to, um, to work with our community to help with the development of that. I'm kind of talking in circles a little bit, and I can understand, <laughs> understand that. But I, I look around not only Australia, but around the world, and just about every capital city in the world, you've got an arts and cultural precinct um, that it draws draws in your economy, okay? It, it draws people there, it draws in tourism, it draws in people go there to spend money. I don't think this development strategy highlights how much our arts and culture um, community and spend is actually a good economic driver for our area. Um, I don't think it highlights um, even what our sporting community brings to the area as far as economic development. So we've, we've got a big focus on uh, logic, which is great, we should have, but we need to be better supportive of our business community, better supportive of our arts and culture community. If we don't have the capacity, let's look to how we can get the capacity to do that. 
Um, I'll be reserving which way I'm voting tonight until I make up my mind. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lowe. Other councillors? Councillor Fulton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I was hoping there'd be uh, plenty of conversation on this one tonight, actually, because um, we're in a bit of a predicament. A predicament in the sense that the council, or this particular councillor group, acknowledged the importance of getting economic development right um, some three and a half years ago, and we all sat here together for the first time. Sorry, most of us sat here together for the first time. Um, and I'm sort of in two minds about the, the problem we have with having reduced capacity, uh, which also means that we won't invest in this ourselves as a council. Um, but I also know that the, the other option to take, the one that's attached, we won't deliver on. Uh, so I'm just worried about what that revised draft economic development strategy looks like because we conducted workshops, we conducted consultation to get to this point. And um, yeah, I just, I just don't think we're going to really best represent our community's interests, Councillor Lowe. Um, that's where I'm stuck. That's where I want to hear some reassurance in this. So I'm hoping uh, colleagues can bring some to the table for me. Thank you, Councillor Fulton. Councillor Simpson Norfolk. Probably just to follow on from that, I note that there's 23 other related strategies or plans that influence this eco-dev strategy. So it's a significant piece of work. And like you said, Councillor Fulton, the fear for what that future may look like, considering some of the resolutions that have been made in reduction of staffing or where that direction may go, which is why it's back before us to get another draft strategy and put that back out to the community. So I'll be keen to see what the community does say about what this next draft may look like and what that actually can or realistically deliver on. Um, and again, acknowledging some other community emails that we've received to date. Um, I think it was just recently. So interesting to see what the community feeds into this, considering it impacts on so many other strategies of Murray Region destination management plans and 2C1C and CBA revitalisation plans and could go on. But yeah, I'll share the same concerns. I'll probably need to see what falls out of the tree and what's going to be best to make sure that we still thrive and, and grow as, with our city, um, and particularly EcoDev plays a, a significant part of that. So I'll be concerned, to say the least. Thank you, Councillor Simsdorfer. Councillor Hall. Uh, it's a difficult one. Um, you know, the, this draft strategy um, uh, seeks to guide council in delivering a balanced, sustainable growth for our community through enhancement of economic prosperity and improved living standards. The draft strategy is structured around three pillars, um, convenience, city convenience, regional lifestyle, global connection, and includes a five-year action plan um, that outlines how we will achieve our vision. A big problem for us, council, at the moment is that we are projected to have a $2.8 million hole in this forthcoming budget. And Council has done a lot to address this in an, with organising organisational restructure um, uh, so we can be financially stable, uh, stable going forward. Um, this has sort of given rise to the reason why we, do, we are doing a review. Um, but I think we can achieve um, uh, good outcomes with this uh, draft. Um, strategy and um, I'll be interested to hear, you know, um, people's views on that um, with it going out to public exhibition. Um, it's about streamlining um, and cost, of, uh, cost efficiencies. So some departments and that we've moved to, we've combined together. Um, some things were being doubled up. Um, so, but, but while still providing the same service, I think this uh, will go a long way in um, addressing any um, uh, issues uh, going forward. It, it might not be the bee's knees, but I think it'll um, provide what we need as a community um, in the next five years. So, yes, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hall. 
Um, where do I start? I, it's really interesting that tonight's discussion has been focused on something that, from my observations, has resulted in a better position for our economic development unit. We've, we've now got a strengthened economic development unit that's reporting directly to the CEO. So it gives it far more influence within the organisation and, and across all the different units of the organisation. I, I think having it direct, directly reporting to the CEO is a really good move. Um, we've still got, in essence, the same number of staff that we've had for some period of time. Um, and I don't see that as the main reason why we're, we're pushing this back down the way. We've had a, a, a number of submissions and at least one of them is absolutely thorough in explaining to us why this strategy isn't the most appropriate way to go for our economic development. That's the first thing. So we really do need to go back and we really do need to look at that submission and we really do need to think about that as a part of our economic development strategy. We also need to look at the priorities for economic development. What is economic development for Wodonga City? It cannot be all things to all people and it cannot be implementation arm of every other strategy that we've got in the place. If we focus on doing that, well, we might as well not have an economic development strategy or indeed an economic development unit in that context. Um, we should be focusing on the advantages that are presented to us and we are very unique in that. We have advantages to operate in a very, very high level at economic development and we should get out of the weeds and we should let others in our community who are charged with other responsibilities to take over and run those sort of programs that we've been dealing with. This is just not what we should be doing in the context of our municipality and the growth potentials that we have. We need to deal at a high level and, and get away from the, the things that are going to be looked after and run in their own accord under different strategies by different people and let the local community, um, business community, look after the local business community. Sure, we, we have to make sure our policies and things don't adversely impact on the business community and we have to make sure our policies are conducive to good activities of the business community. But we shouldn't be running the association that is the business community. So we've got a whole range of things and I think we've missed the boat. I think I said this a number of times before. I think we've missed the boat with the original draft of this strategy and I think it's good that we're going back to first principles to have another look at it, to put it in the context of the opportunities that we've got before us. Uh, Councillor Quilty, you reserved. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you uh, to uh, everyone who have contributed their view of uh, economic development and uh, what it should be and whether the current strategy meets it or not. Um, I would like to emphasize the word economic. In the economic development, arts, culture and tourism are a small, albeit important part of uh, our city life and development. Um, it's not necessarily the area where we will uh, make and attract money to our city. And uh, it is a nice to have uh, uh, a thing to have uh, uh, the capacity to support the arts. It is, uh, of course, necessary for us to have people coming in and uh, enjoying the uh, what our area has to offer. Um, we, uh, I um, kind of disagree with the term reduced capacity. We are not looking at reduced capacity compared to where we started at the start of this council term. We have invested a lot of work and some public resources into our economic development. We have uh, we had uh, at some point emphasis on our global connection. We had some external consultations, some uh, uh, agents uh, helping us out. And uh, I think the work and the funds we have already invested in the economic development will serve as a good service, even though we are not perhaps going to follow through uh, the most ambitious path that we um, envisaged. Uh, however, I uh, uh, allow me to remind you that this uh, place, this city, and this country at large uh, has been built by people who have worked hard, uh, saved up, 
invested carefully, uh, worked hard again, saved up again, and invested carefully. We want our city to bloom and to flourish, but we do not want to end up with a place um, uh, with uh, one of the post-Soviet countries uh, where I grew up having the uh, crumbling infrastructure of glass and concrete, concrete, which once was a big vision of the brighter future, built with uh, people's money, uh, maintenance costs which couldn't be met, um, dreams which uh, didn't eventuate. We need to be realistic, we need to develop, but we need to look at the uh, best ways to develop, the most uh, um, efficient ways to develop, and always remember that we are responsible for community money. Once we have uh, lots of money burning our pockets, we will surely splash it at supporting arts and culture. We have uh, um, excellent tourism facilities, and uh, they are probably not of global standards, so we need to be realistic of uh, whether we're going to attract global or not. We need to continue to invest, but we need to tread very responsibly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coolkey. Councillor Chamberlain to close. Yeah, it has been, has, has been stated. Obviously, the restructuring uh, that was previously voted on by the Council in order to meet our budgetary obligations. One of the directions we've given to the CEO in his um, restructure of the Council was to minimise the effects now, we understand there'll be some effect and some reduced capacity, but the whole idea was to minimise those effects. This does give us an opportunity just to trim and work around the edges, and also, as Councillor uh, Mildred has stated, it gives us an opportunity to maybe make some adjustments according to what has come in in our submissions as well. So there needs to be some adjustment there as well. Um, but having said that, I don't know that we're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think you'll find the economic development strategy will broadly represent exactly what we've already got with some adjustments accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chamberlain. I put that motion. All those in favour? Councillor Quilty, Councillor Chamberlain, Councillor Mildred, Councillor Hall. Those against? Councillor Simpendorfer, Councillor Poulton, Councillor Lowe. The motion is carried. The next item on the agenda is reports for noting, of which there are none. The next item is item 10, reports for information. 10.1, record of councillor meetings. Any comments? 10.2, the decisions register. Comments, councillors? No. 10.3, municipal emergency management planning committee minutes. Any comments? No. 10.4, audit and risk committee minutes. Uh, item 11, notices of motion of which there are none. General business item 12. Any councillors with general business? No. Oh, Councillor Chamberlain. Um, the only item of general business I wanted to bring up tonight is there has been a restructuring council. Uh, there have been some staff members who have uh, accordingly uh, moved on from working for Wodonga Council. And I just wanted to convey my thanks on behalf of the people of Wodonga and Wodonga Council for the work they put in, in some cases, over a very long period of time. And generally speaking, these restructures are not good and not much fun for anyone concerned, certainly not if you're in a position where your position is found to be no longer required. Um, that is no reflection necessarily on the work ethic or the, or the job that these people have been doing. So um, just a general thank you from on my behalf of the work that they've put in over that time. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Simpendorfer. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, just a tribute, if I can, um, acknowledging the, the tragedy in Bondi. 
um, many emergency services will be affected just as much as the victims and their families. Uh, so my heart goes out to them and, and just I, I want to take the opportunity to thank our emergency services and our community that keep us safe every single day because something like that can impact on any community, sadly. So just an opportunity to try and change the narrative that sometimes we do jump all over our emergency services and critical through headlines, but I think this highlights the incredible work that are done, that is done. And I'll just pay tribute to our local emergency services and thank them for what they do in keeping us safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Simpendorfer. Other councillors? No. Um, next item is urgent business. There being none, confidential business. There being none and no confidential urgent business. I therefore close the meeting at 7.05.